Hello, Yara Ninoa. Uh, today, I'm going to start speaking about Wembley Stadium. Okay, as you can see here, put the, some of the photos of Wembley Stadium, and you've got some sentences here, and you have to predict if they are false or they are true according to your experience. Then, we're going to listen to the audio and you will see if they are true or false. Unit 1, Lesson 7. All false. Number one. Wembley Stadium is in London, the capital of the UK. Number two. The stadium opened in 2007. It is the biggest stadium in the UK. It is 133 meters high and it has a circumference of one kilometer. Number three. You can see important football matches in the stadium. For a football match, the stadium has a capacity of 90,000 people. Number four. Every year in July, football fans watch the FA Cup final at Wembley Stadium. Number five. Wembley Stadium was important in the Olympic Games in 2012. Some of the football matches were at the stadium. Number six. You can also see pop concerts at the stadium. For a pop concert, the stadium can hold up to 82,000 people. There are often concerts with pop stars such as Shakira, Justin Bieber, Madonna and One Direction. So, now I'm going to show you the correct answers. So, check and compare with your own answers. As you can see, number three, is not correct. It's true, not false. Now, moving on, we are going to do something different. Remember that we are on page 11 in the People's Book, so I recommend you to open your People's Book on page 11. There you, you will see all the information. Now, um, we are going to analyze some of the vocabulary we are going to uh, find in the next conversation. Okay, this is the vocabulary. Listen. Unit 1, lesson 7. Pupils book, page 11. Activity 22. Listen and repeat. Number 1, stadium. Number three, spare ticket. Number four, quarter past three. Okay, these are some of the words you are going to find in this dialogue. And I have to uh, clarify some meaning here. I know that you know what the stadium is, what a pop concert is. Uh, what is quarter past three, but maybe you don't know what is a spare ticket. Uh, you probably know what is a ticket, something that you buy to go to a concert. You need the ticket to go to a concert and you have to pay for it because it's not for free. But the spare ticket is when someone that is going to be is going to go with you to the concert um, cannot possibly go to the concert. So you um, 
ask another friend to use that ticket because the person, uh, the owner of the ticket cannot go because he or she is ill, because he has got or she has got an appointment or he has, he has got something important to do and he cannot go to the concert. So you've got a spare ticket. That's the meaning. Okay. And now we are going to listen to the conversation here. Listen, because you have to do something similar in your activity books when you finish. Are you ready? Read the script. Repeat. Hello? Hi, Carrie. It's Ed. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I'm calling to see if you're free on Saturday night. Yes, I am. Why? Well, my family has got tickets to see One Direction. with us. My brother has got a bad cold, so we've got a spare ticket. Oh, yes! Wow! I'd love to! Just let me ask my dad. Hi, Ed. My dad says I can do it. I'm so excited! Good. We can pick you up from your house at quarter past three on Saturday afternoon. Now it's time for you to start thinking about a conversation to invite someone to a concert, to a sport event, or whatever. You've got this model, and I want you to do it in your activity books, page number nine. Okay, fill in the gaps, and then you can act it out with a member of your family. We're going to start speaking about languages. Languages around the world. There are thousands of different languages in the world. Lots of people can speak more than one language. Some people are bilingual because they speak English and Japanese, for example, if you live in Japan. And some other are bilingual because they speak English and Spanish. For example, someone who lives in America. And learning a new language is fun. You can practice a foreign language by using the internet to look for new words, listening to music in that language, or by doing activities from a book. Some languages are very similar. They've got similar vocabulary and grammar. And other languages are very different. For example, some languages use characters instead of letters in an alphabet. How many languages do you speak? Do you think learning a foreign language is important? What makes learning a new language fun for you? Can you answer to these questions? Come on, Ayer, and come on, Ainoa, you can do it. So remember, we are on page 12 now, lesson eight, and we are speaking about languages. And to be more specific, we are going to speak now about differences and similarities in languages. So we are going to listen to this text about it, and then you will have to answer to some questions. Are you ready? Let's do it. Come on. Unit 1. Lesson 8. People's Book. Page 12. Activity 27. Listen and read. Then answer the questions. Differences and similarities in languages. There are more than 6,000 different languages in the world. Some of these languages have similar vocabulary and grammar, but many are completely different. For example, some languages give nouns a gender. The nouns can be masculine, feminine or neutral. Other languages don't give nouns a gender. 
Take, for example, Spanish. If you are speaking in Spanish, you will notice, you will understand that some words are feminine, for example, la ola, for example, um, la casa, and some other words are, or some other words, yes, have got a masculine gender. For example, el lápiz, el, el armario, etc., 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 yes? But there are other languages which don't give nouns a gender. For example, English or Basque language. Yes? All the words are the same. All the words are neutral. Some languages use the letters of an alphabet to write words. Other languages use characters instead of words. Some languages don't conjugate verbs. Other languages have many different conjugations. People learning foreign languages. I'm learning Japanese because my brother lives in Japan. Some aspects of Japanese are easy. For example, there aren't any verb conjugations and nouns don't have a gender. But reading and writing in Japanese is very difficult for me. There are thousands of different characters to learn. And when you read a sentence, you don't read it from left to right. You read it from top to bottom. I'm English. But I live in Wales. I'm learning Welsh because I want to speak to my Welsh friends in Welsh. In English, nouns don't have a gender, so it's difficult for me to remember the gender of nouns in Welsh. And spelling Welsh words isn't easy. But I love speaking the Welsh language and I'm very happy with my progress. How do you say, do you live in Wales, in Welsh? Edahimbu in Hymri. I'd like to answer to these questions uh, below. Number one, which language is written in characters? Number two, which language doesn't conjugate verbs? Number three, which language gives nouns a gender? Number four, which language do you read in a different uh, direction? And number five, what things do Harry and Vanessa think are difficult about learning a language? You have, you have to based on the article here, the text here about Harry and Vanessa and their experience with languages. Once you have finished doing this, this, I want you to go to the DVD book And on page 10, do exercises 19, 20, and 22. Okay? Finish with, um, I want you to listen and then circle. We are going to do activity 21, which is a listening, and you have to circle the correct answer, the correct option. Are you ready? You can listen to it twice. Listen. Unit 1, Lesson 8, Activity Book, Page 10, Activity 21. Ed is asking Becky about learning a foreign language. Are you learning a foreign language, Becky? Yes. I'm learning French at school. Do you like it? Oh, yeah. I love it. I think it's a beautiful language. I love listening to it. Do you think it's difficult? Sometimes. Reading and listening are easy, but speaking and writing are quite difficult for me. And French grammar is so complicated. I can't remember all the verb conjugations. Are you happy with your progress? Yeah, I'm happy. 
Sometimes I think I'm learning very slowly, but that's normal. My teacher says I'm making good progress. Good luck with your work and see you soon in class. Bye-bye.